Well, good evening to those that are watching uh, live, um, and I hope you've enjoyed the different speakers that have spoken with different topics that Gift has given each and every person. Um, uh, I think he has had um, such an incredible lineup of people that can deliver deliver scripture. It's just uh, been amazing seeing the people that were that are on the poster. Um, uh, well done to Gift for just um, being obedient to the Holy Spirit and being able to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit um, and uh, being able to reach uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, through this ministry. It's, um, um, it is a Jesus Everywhere ministry indeed. Um, the, the number one reason why we do what we do is because we want to see Jesus uh, revealed through each and every individual. Um, that's the number one reason, to see Christ, Christ formed in us and through us. Our lives must give an expression of who Jesus is. That's the reason we said yes to Jesus, and that's the reason we follow Jesus. It's because Christ is being formed through each and every individual until we all reach a perfection where Christ is glorified in our lives, in our expressions. And so it really is an incredible, um, an incredible ministry that uh, Gift has started. And well done, well done, man, um, uh, for, for finding where your voice is and being able to stand on that and declare what Christ is saying through uh, your heart. And, and you really are a gift to many. Um, I love, I don't know how you do this all the time. I've taken four or five attempts trying to get it to happen. Um, and um, yeah, but it's such an incredible thing um, that you, and just watching you um, unpack scripture. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me. Um, and um, we pray for you and pray for you always and praying that God may continue to keep you. Uh, may God continue to increase you. Uh, may God continue to um, expand your ministry. And before I go into the word, I really believe that that um, that um, this ministry that God gave you um, even years and years ago, um, uh, when he planted the idea in you, you have no idea uh, how many people it's going to reach um, and how many people are going to watch and are watching already. Um, and um, it's reaching, it's reaching, it's reaching thousands and millions of people. And this is just the beginning of what God is going to do and, uh, and use you through this ministry. So well done for being obedient. And so, yeah, let's get to it. Um, the, the, the topic that Gift gave me is on redemption. Uh, it's an incredible topic uh, concerning redemption. And um, redemption is such a, 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 a beautiful concept that really reveals, um, reveals who we are and who we've become through the vehicle of redemption. And so if you look at scriptures, if you study the entire Bible, if you look at from Genesis to Revelation, uh, you will see that the, the vehicle of redemption uh, begins to flow through the scriptures, through each testament um, from the old covenant to the new covenant, um, the, the vehicle of redemption is flowing through the lenses of each book. And so it's incredible when you understand that, that, um, that, uh, that the term redemption is such a powerful weapon um, that God has crafted in order to redeem us um, into our original state of creation. And so um, when you look at the concept of redemption, when God, um, if we look at redemption as a concept, um, even though the word redemption uh, is used interchangeably with the word salvation, these two words, um, they, they, they carry the same assignment, but um, in demonstration, they are completely different. And even though they carry the, the very same assignment, the word salvation uh, to save someone means uh, is to, to, to paint it in a picture format. Uh, salvation means to save someone from something, meaning to save someone from drowning. Um, um, you reach out your hand and you save that person. That is salvation. Salvation uh, requires a, 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 it requires a hero that comes into the picture to rescue those that are dying, uh, to rescue those that are drowning. So a savior, in a sense, a savior 
is there to save those that are lost in something and therefore salvation comes in the picture with the very assignment of saving you from something so um so we are being saved from one dimension into another that's salvation salvation means we we were we were deep in our sins drowning in our sins and therefore we needed a savior and jesus comes in the picture throws his hands into our space of dying uh, into a space of drowning sorry so he reaches out his hand and he grabs us from our place of drowning then that's the picture of salvation the word salvation um, comes from the Greek word soteria which also carries the same word which found we found the word sozo which means to be rescued to be delivered to be freed so that is salvation salvation Jesus is our savior because he comes into the picture and he finds us lost in our lost state Jesus comes as a savior and then he rescues us from our sins and so that is the, the, the state of what salvation is. And, and so salvation is such a powerful thing. And so redemption and salvation, um, um, they, they, co they, they coexist and work together. These two, these two um, terms are powerful terms. Though they carry the very same assignment, their demonstration um, is, is different. It's not the same demonstration, but it carries the very same assignment. So that is what salvation is. Uh, salvation means salvation means you were lost you were you were trapped you were you were captured by something and a savior came in the picture grabbed you from where you were lost grabbed you from where from what kept you captive and therefore salvation comes in the picture and then redeems you saves you that's why when we when we cried out for Jesus, our state was in a was in a position of being lost, and we knew exactly that we needed a savior. So that's why we cried out for a savior. So now redemption. What is redemption? So redemption, redemption is this redemption. If you study the 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 old uh, French or, or Latin ex, ex, explanation of the word re, uh, redemption. The, 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 oh, the meaning of the word redemption, uh, it carries the idea of um, um, uh, or, or, or restoring something that, is, that was enslaved, um, um, bringing back something. That is what redemption means. It means to redeem something, to restore, to draw back. But also, here's the powerful thing. Redemption means to buy back. And so salvation, you can save someone without needing to buy them back. Redemption, in, in, in its sense, redemption means, redemption means that there has to be a price that must be paid in order to redeem something. That's, a, that's redemption. Redemption means, redemption requires a price. A price must be paid, a price must, a price must be demonstrated in order to redeem something. So therefore, redemption means there has to be a price that must be paid in order to redeem something that was lost. Uh, the word redemption, the, if you study the etymology of the word, uh, it comes from, it's such a beautiful word, it's broken into, the word red means to return back, to redeem something, to restore something. And so therefore it carries the same idea, the, 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 the French idea or the Latin expression is to restore something by buying it back. So you are buying it, you are buying something back to its original state. And so, um, it, it, and so, it, it, in a sense, where, where where something has been taken, um, you go and purchase it, you buy it back, and that is redemption. Redemption requires a price. A price must be paid. Uh, a price must be demonstrated in order to get it back. That is redemption. So salvation, there's no price that needs to be paid for salvation. You just need a savior who steps into the picture, and then the savior saves you. But but redemption, there must be a price that must be paid um, in order so 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 that the beautiful picture is this that redemption is 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 seen through the lenses of scripture so god is so powerful that is he's able to fulfill for us a savior through redemption so he conquers he conquers our state of being redeemed into its into our original state but he conquers it and um, he conquers it by redeeming us through a savior that's how these two terms link we, we are being redeemed through a savior. There's a savior that steps into the show and the savior steps into the show to fulfill the assignment of redemption. 
That's the beautiful picture of redemption. And so we, we, are, we have been redeemed. We are being redeemed because a savior has stepped into the place. And, um, and so when we look at the concept of, concept of redemption, redemption did not begin after the fall. Uh, often we say a, a Adam fell and God then began his redemption plan. No, redemption did not begin after the fall. And because because the, the, the concept of redemption, so the redemption is not for creation, but creation is for redemption. We are created to be redeemed. And so and so so God creates us uh, so that in our broken state we can be redeemed into the perfect image of God that we've been created in. And so redemption did not begin after the fall. If we look at Revelation chapter 13, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 13. It's such a powerful picture which shows us that before the foundations, before the foundations of the earth, um, God already started the process of redemption. And that process was to redeem us um, into the image of the Son of God. So uh, Revelation chapter 13 verses 8, it reads as follows. And it says, and all who dwell on earth will worship it. And everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. He was slain before the foundations of the world. He was slain before. That means before Jesus went to the cross, before, before crucifixion took place, before he was crucified. In a sense, in a sense, before the foundation, before he existed. God already put in place a plan of redemption before the fall of man. That's why God is not taken by surprise. He is not shocked when Adam falls. He's not caught off guard. Uh, he's, he already has a plan. Uh, he already has a plan in place to redeem you and I. He knows exactly that you and I are going to fall. So in, 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 before we existed, God already put in place, before the foundations of the earth, God already put in place the redemption plan. And so redemption began before the foundations began. And so he starts the journey. He starts the process of, of, of redeeming us. But we, we, we find it in scripture, the, 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 the picture of redemption being revealed through, through Genesis to Revelation, uh, where, where scriptures are beautifully expressing the picture of redemption. And the assignment of redemption is for you and I to be redeemed back to our original state. That original state is when God creates men. In, in, in the Bible says God from the dust. He, he drew from the dust. That term dust may come is where we find the name Adama, which means created from the dust, molded from the ground. He begins to breathe into the nostrils of men. And so therefore, and then he says he then creates men in our, and we see the Trinity Godhead already existing in the, in the garden. He says we now create men in our image and likeness that's the original state that you and I are always being redeemed back to what is the original state image and likeness and um, that's the original state that you and I are being redeemed and restored back to and the price has to be paid for you and I to be fully redeemed and so and so that's so it before the foundations of the earth God already started the redemption process and he knew exactly that he needed to redeem us. So when we look at Revelation chapter 13, it says that before the foundations of the earth, before the foundations of the earth, the lamp of God, the lamp of God was already slain before the foundations. And so before the fall of man, redemption was already in place, active and activated. Um, and so he puts it into action when, when Adam falls into place. Um, and, so, and so we look at scripture, um, and sorry, I'm going to keep turning just to look at what I've written down. So we look at scriptures where scriptures begin to point to us, pictures where, where, where redemption is beginning to show and revealed through the scriptures. Um, it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, so when we look at when we look at the fact that the redemption be began before the foundations of the earth, I read Revelation chapter Revelation chapter thirteen verse eight. Uh, another scripture to correlate is, is in First Corinthians chapter two verse seven. It's a powerful scripture. 
um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, uh, verses, verses, verses 7. Um, and it reads as follows. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, you've read Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7. It reads as follows. It says, let me read it from verse 6. It says, yet among the mature we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. Verse 7 says, but we impart a secret and, and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. And it says, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory before, but it was written. And so it says before the ages, this, this glory that Paul speaks about, he speaks about the glory and that glory he speaks about is the son of God. And he says, he says, he says, he says before, before the ages, he says he was decreed, God decreed him, God decreed the son of God. We have to understand that the son of God was not created. He was not made. He was decreed into existence. But then in order for him to come into the earth, he had to come through the vehicle of a woman, but he was decreed declared and so before the ages before the foundations he was decreed and that's that's the that's the correlation between these two uh, uh, powerful texts and so so we see redemption the first place um, I'd love to go back to it when we look at redemption being revealed and um, we look at Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 3 verses verses 18 the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 18 when 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 Adam falls it's such a powerful text would really typifies redemption for uh, traveling through the lenses of each of all the 66 books up until we come to understanding that the entire Bible is concerning redeeming the bride back to the perfection of her husband. That's what's been happening throughout these beautiful texts. We, we, we as the bride, the, the beautiful bride of Christ, we are being redeemed daily, daily. You and I are being redeemed daily back to the perfection, uh, the perfection of who Christ has formed us to be. That's what's happening from Revelation to Genesis, from Genesis to Revelation. The lenses of the scriptures are pointing us to Jesus so that the husband, when Christ as our husband looks at, uh, looks at us as his wife, his bride, he sees perfection being glorified and the picture and the beautiful image um, is, uh, is being restored when we look at Jesus. Isn't that a powerful thing? And so I look when we look at when Adam falls, God says in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 18, it speaks about the ground being cursed and he speaks about Adam and Eve working the sweat and working to till the ground. And he uses this picture when he refers to, when he refers to a curse. He uses those thorns and thistles to, to, to typify the curse. I love what redemption does because redemption carries that very same thorn and it travels through the lenses of scriptures and you see it moving through each and every scripture of the Old Testament where the thorn is mentioned. It speaks of the curse. Even Paul in Corinthians, when he speaks about the when he speaks about the curse, he speaks it as a symbol of the thorn. But I love what scripture does because it carries that very same thorn declared in Genesis chapter 3. And traveling through the lenses of scriptures, redemption takes it into Matthew chapter 27. When we come into the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament opens with the sounding sound of redemption when the soldiers are crucifying Jesus. The Bible says they picked up a thorn and, and, and this is what they do. It's so powerful. You have to look at it. Genesis, uh, Matthew chapter 27, it says they began to put a, a scarlet robe around him. The, the picture of the scarlet robe typifies the picture of the, the blood of Jesus. It typifies the new covenant. They put around him a scarlet robe 
And then they began to put together a reed a, of thorns and thistles, a crown of thorns and thorns and thistles. And the Bible says they place it on the head of the Messiah. They place it on the head of Jesus. And, um, and they did not know that they were fulfilling scripture and they were fulfilling the assignment of redemption declared from Genesis chapter 3 verse 18 when the curse is typified as a thorn. Do you understand that powerful statement right there? It's such a powerful thing where the redemption is able to fulfill itself through the Messiah. And when they put the crown of thorns on the head of the Messiah, they, they declared into the kingdom that, that the thorns, the curse declared in Genesis chapter 3 had been, had been crucified on the head of the Messiah. The Bible says that it says that the anointing drips from the head. It flows from the head of Jesus down to his beard. So when the, what the anointing touches, it breaks. And so therefore the curse that was declared in Genesis now becomes broken on the head of the Messiah when, this, when the soldiers begin to put a crown of thorns on the head of the Messiah. Do you understand that, that, that script, if you read the Bible as one book speaking to each other, the old, the old Testament declaring mysteries that are fulfilled in the New Testament, the New Testament uh, explaining the shadows of the Old Testament, all of it is such a powerful, it's such a powerful uh, uh, mystery that if you dissect deep enough you come across mysteries that can only be opened up if you search for them and so let's look at scripture and see where and let's trace through the old testament as we look at the, the mentions of the, the 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 picture of redemption flowing through the lenses of the scriptures and so it's such a it's such a powerful thing when we look at um, the, the 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 progressive theory of redemption through Genesis to Revelation. The, the first progressive theory, I, I mentioned Genesis chapter 3, verse 18, but also it also begins with Adam in Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse 15, when it speaks about, let's go there, G Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, um, a powerful text. I, I want you to understand that the entire Bible is pointing you, you and I, and it's, sound, it's sounding the message of redemption, and it's making, a, a, it's singing a song of redemption as we get to Revelation. Every song sung through the lenses of the scriptures is to, is to point us to a place where we are being redeemed. We are being redeemed to something powerful. So Revelation, uh, Genesis chapter 3, sorry, Genesis chapter 3, verses 15, it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. You understand when scripture speaks about a woman, it's speaking about, uh, it's speaking about, it's speaking about the church. It's speaking about the bride. The bride typifies the church. The church is the bride. And so Jesus, as the husband, is married to the bride, the church. So that's why when, the, and, and so it says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise, he shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise, and you shall bruise his heel. Um, and it says, "He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel." There, the picture is being typified of it already. It declares, it declares the assignment of uh, Jesus when he comes into the picture, the Messiah who comes to crush the head of the serpent. That's Jesus being declared in Genesis. Do you understand that Jesus, that God already had a plan? God already had a plan in place before Adam ate the fruit. So when Adam falls, God already had the plan in place. And so isn't that a powerful thing? And we see it again um, 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 when Abel in Genesis chapter 4, when it speaks, when it, in Abel speaking of the shedding of the blood, uh, a powerful picture of redemption being uh, typified and revealed. Um, uh, let's look at um, uh, Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. Um, it reads, it's followed in, and it says, and, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock, and they are fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offspring. Um, and in, um, and if, you, if you connect that also to um, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. It says, by, by faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which he was commended as righteousness, God commending him by accepting his gift. And through his faith, 
Though he died, he still, he still speaks. The blood of Abel still speaks. And so that's another picture uh, when we look at the shedding of the blood, another picture. A price is being paid in order for redemption to take place. Uh, Abel puts a price, he puts into the place in order to redeem, in order to step into a place of redemption. Another picture we see of uh, is, the, is when Noah builds the ark, the, the ark typifies Christ the way to eternal life in Genesis 6. And um, um, uh, another picture we see in scripture is when, uh, is when Abraham offers Isaac as a sacrifice. You understand? That's another picture of redemption because a price must be paid when we speak about redemption. Abraham takes Isaac. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at Isaac as Isaac is traveling with his father to the place of being sacrificed. Um, I would have questioned my father. I would have said, um, uh, where are you taking me? Because this, 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 I know what it means when what is required when we do sacrifices. And then, so where is the lamp? He continues to ask about that down the line. And, Ab- and, uh, and Abraham takes Isaac and he says something profound. He says, God will provide for us and uh, let us go to the mountain. He speaks to the servant. He says, wait for us. Do you understand that Abraham had, had, the, had the understanding that if even though God had commanded him, he knew that God would bring them back. <laughs> he knew that God would bring them back. He says, he says, wait for us here. We and my son will come back. We need to go to the mountain to worship. And then he takes him to the mountain. I'm looking at this picture where, uh, when, where Abraham is sacrificing Isaac. He puts him on the altar and Isaac is quiet. He ties him. He puts him on the altar. He begins to prepare to slay him. And, and this picture already it, it typifies abraham who points to god the father isaac who points to who points to jesus the son and he it, it's such a picture of god the father and the son showing us the picture of redemption through abraham and isaac isn't that a powerful picture being being fully revealed before jesus comes in the new testament abraham is already fulfilling the assignment of redemption and so he, he puts him there because a price, again, once again, a price must be paid. In order for you and I to be redeemed, a price must be paid. And then we see it again in, in, in when the children of Israel, of Israel are being delivered through the blood of the Lamb. We see it through the tabernacle of, uh, of service when in, in Exodus chapter 12. And there's another powerful picture when, when Rahab uh, lets down the spies. This is a powerful picture of redemption connecting from Genesis to Revelation. When, when Rahab 10, when Rahab lets down the spies through the window. Um, spies, you must understand, spies, uh, spies typify. Um, when we look about spying something, we speak about, we speak about throwing perspective. Or it, we speak about throwing your eyes into another dimension that is what what it means to spy something it means your eyes have been opened into another dimension that you haven't stepped into so that's the picture the symbol of spy when we spy something in the spiritual sense we are throwing our eyes into a dimension that we have not yet entered into and so Rahab um, in the book of Joshua lets down the spies and the Bible says that a scarlet thread is let down through the window and the spies come down the scarlet thread. That scarlet thread points to us the connection of redemption. The, again we see scarlet which is a picture of the blood. It speaks of the ple- a picture of the new covenant. Here we see again redemption being declared as loud as we can see through the lenses of scripture when we see Rahab letting down the spies and 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 this is what this is what this is a picture this is a beautiful picture Rahab lets down the spies and uh, that picture uh, typifies to us a connection between the old covenant and the new covenant later down the line when we come into the new testament when Matthew opens up in Matthew chapter 1 there we see Rahab connect Connected to the lineage of Jesus. Isn't that a powerful picture? Uh, as we speak about the lineage of Jesus, there's Rahab mentioned as a connecting point to Jesus the Messiah. 
Rahab was the was the connecting space. And I love the picture of, of Rahab because the spies, the spies, the spies typify Jesus moving through the Old Testament into the New Testament. Rahab typifies Rahab typifies uh, the church being able to carry two covenants. The church typified through the life of Rahab being fulfilled in the New Testament. Isn't that a powerful thing? So redemption is so powerful. It travels through the lenses of scripture. And so we see that we see this being typified through the prophet Isaiah. Jeremiah speaks about, and then John the Baptist declares again, and when he speaks about the Redeemer, and also the last book, the last book of the Old Testament closes with the conversation of redemption in Malachi chapter 4. Let's go there. Malachi chapter 4, and also an interesting, powerful scripture um, when the Old Testament closes with a, with a beautiful text in Malachi chapter 4. Um, and Malachi chapter 4 uh, uh, declares before Jesus steps into the picture, uh, the prophet be begins to prophesy the coming Messiah. And that's also the picture. Redemption is traveling through the lenses of the scripture from Genesis, uh, Exodus, all through the way, Numbers, Leviticus, everywhere, Judges, Joshua. It's, it's, a, it's, it's declaring to us that God already had a plan in place to redeem you and I. So so he says in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, let me read it from verse uh, chapter 4, verse 4. It says, remember the law of my servant Moses, the, the statutes and the rules that I commanded him at Horeb for, for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Before the day of the Lord comes. And so he, he began to declare into the atmosphere, he begins to declare into existence that the Messiah um, who, who fulfills the plan of redemption. And so when Jesus comes into the picture, you understand, as I've said, that the redemption requires a price to be paid. Um, there must be a price that is paid in order, in order for, for redemption to fully redeem us back, to redeem us back into our original state. So in the Old Testament, the animals of the Old Testament could not... <clears throat> The animals of the Old Testament could not fulfill what Jesus did on the cross. So when Jesus steps into the show to fulfill redemption, it needed, it needed the, the blood of a perfect lamp. You understand that the types and shadows of the, of, the, of, the, of the animals that were slain in the Old Testament uh, sprinkled into the, 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 the symbols of the Old Testament, the symbols of the Old Tabernacle. All of these symbols were symbols pointing us to Jesus, who is the fulfillment of the redemption plan of God declared before the foundation foundations began. So when Jesus steps into the show, he is a fulfillment of something that was already spoken before he existed. Mary was just a vehicle. She was just a vehicle that carried what God already carried. And so God already carried Jesus before Mary carried Jesus. And so when Jesus comes, he needed to come in the vehicle of a human form. That's why scripture says he, he, he had to clothe himself in human clothes as a God. Jesus was 100% God and 100% human. In order to fulfill the plan of redemption, in order to fulfill the price that needed to be paid, it needed someone that was 100% a blood, that was, that was without shame, without guilt, 100%, 100% God and 100% human. And he began to put on himself that clothes, the clothes of humanity in order. You see, scripture says he became sin. He did not sin. He became sin. That means the identity, the originality of sin, the existence of sin. Jesus became, became sin so that you and I can become the righteousness of Christ. 
Isn't that a powerful thing? So, so right now, Jesus, Jesus fulfills the Old Testament shadows. He fulfills the Old Testament types and shadows of redemption. And he begins to step into the show. And he says, he says, Moses, the prophets and the law spoke of me when they spoke of a Messiah, a Savior coming. And I needed a perfect vehicle. And that vehicle was just a, a, a vehicle, an untouched, an untamed virgin that was not contaminated by anything else. He, he could not come through the sperm cells of humanity because the sperm cells of humanity were already contaminated. It needed a virgin that was not touched. It was not contaminated so Jesus can step into the show and fulfill the assignment of redemption. And so Jesus comes into the show and he comes into the picture and, and it's a power Powerful thing when Jesus steps into the show because he's coming, he's coming as a savior, fulfilling redemption, as a savior, fulfilling that plan of redemption. He comes into the picture, and not only is he and not only is he saving us from being bound and kept captive, but he saves us, and in the process of saving us, he redeems us back into our original state. So you and I, when we are being saved, we go through the, the stages of being redeemed back into the image of Christ being formed in us and through us. Isn't that a powerful thing? You and I, you and I are being fully redeemed. We are being restored. We are being captured. We are being restored into the image of Christ. And Jesus steps into the picture and he fulfills the assignment. He fulfills the shadows. He fulfills every, every prophecy spoken of a Messiah coming that is coming to fulfill. Isn't that a powerful thing? Everything in the scripture, even, even the picture of Moses, when Moses, when, when, when Moses is being put into the basket and hidden in the basket, he, he typifies, he typifies the he typifies the fulfillment of the Messiah. He is hidden in the basket to point to us that the mysteries of Jesus were hidden, were hidden only to be discovered by those who were like the spies thrown into dimensions to unlock all. Only, th only, only things that can only be revealed to those who were willing to search it. And so everything in the Old Testament, it, it was hidden to those who, have, uh, who had eyes to search it out. Search it out to, in order for us to identify the glory of the Old Testament that was spoken, fulfilled through Jesus. So Jesus steps into the show and fulfills the assignment of redemption. And redemption is fulfilled uh, and redemption is fulfilled. I, I, I love what the scripture says when it speaks about redemption um, it, it, and it speaks about uh, the fulfillment of redemption. And we understand that we, we have been redeemed. We, we, we have been redeemed. We are redeemed. And that's the beautiful thing of redemption. Let me read some, just some few scriptures um, um, so that we can close. I love Paul says, he says, in him, speaking about Christ Jesus, in him, in Jesus, our Savior, so that in the Savior, there is redemption. So in him, Jesus, the Savior, we have redemption through his blood. Why his blood? Because his blood is not like the blood of the animals that could only cover sin, but his blood has the power not just to cover sin, but to remove the existence of sin. And so, and so, so in him, so therefore in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his glory. Isn't that a powerful thing? So therefore a price is being paid and a, a price is being fulfilled. And so that's what, that's what redemption is about. Let's look at some more scriptures as we look at this. Um, another scripture, um, now, let me just go into it um, right now. Um, another scripture that we can look at that speaks of redemption. Um, um, when we look at First uh, Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 17, uh, verse 17 to 19. Uh, it says such a powerful thing. It says, conduct yourself in fear during the times of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with per perishable things. Understand this with perishable things like silver or gold. That's that's the currency of the earthly currency. And it says it says and then it says you are not uh, redeemed by an earthly currency. But it says from your futile and it says from your futile ways of life inherited from your forefathers. 
And then he says, but with, a, but with precious blood as of the lamb, uh, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. He says, you were not redeemed with silver and gold. Silver and gold speaks of uh, silver and gold speaks of the earthly currency, but also silver and gold. If you study the Old Testament, silver and gold speaks of it speaks of royalty. The priest, um, the the priest, um, spoke, uh, the priest honored silver and gold, and gold spoke spoke of the sanctuary of the priesthood. But also those were shadows and types, and then it points us to this reality. And it says, but with precious blood, the precious blood of Jesus is is the kingdom currency, a much more expensive currency. That's the price that was paid for you and I to be redeemed. So we were redeemed with an expensive price, and that price was the blood of Jesus. Isn't that a powerful thing? And so, and so, when we, that's what it means when we speak about uh, and when we speak about redemption. Uh, Titus chapter two, verse thirteen to fourteen says, "Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus, who gave Himself." for us to redeem us he gave himself he was he jesus became the price and so therefore jesus became the price he therefore it, it, it's such a powerful thing he in order for us to purchase us to buy us back he knew that it needed a god to sell himself for say it needed a god to put himself as as the only price that is worthy enough to buy you and i back to him so God gave himself in order to win you and I back. That is redemption. That is redemption. Redemption is a powerful thing. Um, and, so, and so you and I are redeemed. We are redeemed. And I, I want to declare right now into your spaces, I declare right now that whatever the enemy has stolen in your life, I declare that, that, that the blood of Jesus that, that is so powerful that exists um, in you. The Bible says that the same, the same power that rested on Jesus, the same Holy Ghost, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in the inside of you. And I decree and declare that, that everything that the enemy stole from you, the, the power of redemption that exists in the inside of you. That's why that's why Corinthians says it says it says we, we are in Christ, we are a new creation. So therefore, if you are in Christ, you, you are in the redemption blood of Jesus. And so therefore I decree and declare right now, whatever the enemy stole from you in 2022, I decree and declare that the blood of Jesus and Jesus in your life has the power to redeem that very same thing back into God. And I want to decree and declare that, that God is redeeming your callings and your assignment back to him. God is redeeming and restoring your passion and your love for Jesus back to him. And I decree and declare right now, whatever the enemy stole from you, your vision, your perspective, like the spies that were thrown into the land to spy the land. I, I decree and declare as they, as, as they went into the land, the Bible says they went into the land, they picked up different fruits that were in the land, the the, the, the fruits were pomegranates, uh, uh, grapes, and they began to pick up those fruits and they came back into the land and they said, this land existed with grapes. Grapes speaks of, it speaks of the, the wealth, the richness. It speaks of inheritance of wealth. And I really decree and declare that you and I are stepping into an inheritance of wealth. We are stepping into an inheritance of the riches of God in Jesus name. I decree and declare that there is redemption in the atmosphere and God is redeeming us is rede redeeming us back to the fullness the image of Christ Jesus we are being redeemed we are being restored I want to decree and declare right now whatever the enemy has stolen in your families the destruction that he has caused in your families the, 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 the separation that he has called the division that he has caused in your families I want to step into the anointing right now and decree and declare that the son of God has the power to redeem whatever the enemy has stolen in Jesus name father in the name of Jesus I thank you for every listener that has been listening and hearing by the sound of my voice I decree and declare right now Lord I thank you for what you have redeemed them into I thank you Lord for what you have called them into in Jesus mighty name amen and amen thank you guys and thank you gift for having me um, awesome <laughs>